Welcome. This is the Cisco CCNA ENSA, also known as the Enterprise Networking Security and Automation course. This course focuses on the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is course 3 of 3. Moving on, we have our multi-access OSPF network, which is not point to point. These are going to be, again, via broadcast. So another type of network that uses OSPF is, again, multi-access. Here we're talking about the distributions of link state advertisements, also known as LSAs. The router that is elected for the role should be determined by the network administrator through proper configuration, as opposed to a election. Hence the setting the appropriate router IDs so that the administrator can properly set which router will become the designated router. Again, multi-access network, OSPF will elect a designated router and a backup designated router. Again, the DR is responsible for collecting and distributing LSAs sent and received. The DR will be used for a multicast high BFE for address. It will use 224.0.0.5, which is basically a clever way of saying all OSPF routers on that network. So the primary designated router will be the one that's going to be sending and receiving the LSAs. If the designated router fails, a backup will kick in, hence the BDR. Because again, the BDR will listen passively. It will also maintain a record and a relationship with all routers and routes, so that if the DR does stop producing hello packets, the BDR can kick in immediately. If you are not a DR or a BDR, you will be known as a DR other. This is essentially a router that's classified as an other than designated router. And DR others will use the multicast address of 224.006. Again, all designated routers to send OSP of packets to the DR and BDR while only the DR and BDR will listen for the 224.006. So again, here the DR other will send that multicast address, and that's a clever way of saying to send to the DR and BDR. In a multi-access topology, here we have three routers connected to some form of layer two network. Because the routers are connected over a common uh, network, OSPF has automatically elected a DR and BDR. Here, if we are looking at the router IDs, the highest router ID will become the DR. The second highest will become the backup DR, or BDR. To verify the roles, we can again do a show IP OSPF interface and you can see the designated router and the backup designated router IDs as well as your current router ID. So again, R1 has two adjacencies, one with the BDR and one with the DR. You can see that here's a neighbor count, adjacent neighbor count, and you can see the adjacent neighbors. 2222 is the ID and 3333 is the other ID, and it will actually list as backup DR and DR. So the output is this is looking at the output for R2. You will notice that it also has two neighbors, the adjacency with neighbor 1111. It does not have a name because it would actually be a DR other, and it has the adjacency to 3333, which is the DR. You can also see its router ID. You can see the designated router and the backup designated router right here. It will provide additional information, but this is the key stuff that we need to look at. If we look at R3, again, R3 is connected to one and two, and same thing like the other one, it will list the designated routers, the backup designated routers, and it will list the adjacencies. And any important information about those adjacencies here, with the neighbor being 2222, its important information would be that it is part of the backup designated router. 
and that is it. So again, looking at show IP OSPF interface, you can see the router ID, you can see the router state, you can see the priority, you can see the adjacencies, and you can see which routers are classified as the DR and BDR. So how can we verify the DR and BDR and their adjacencies? We need to do the show IP OSPF neighbor command and they should state a few different things. It should be a full druther, a full DR, a full BDR, or a two-way druther. Basically a full druther, this is when a uh, DR or BDR router that is fully adjacent with a non-DR or non-BDR router. These two neighbors can exchange hello packets, update queries, updates and queries, and update queries, replies and acknowledgements. A full DR, the router is fully adjacent with the indicated DR neighbor, with two neighbors can exchange hello packets, updates, queries, replies, and acknowledgements. A full BDR, again, full adjacency, indicating the BR neighbor. These two neighbors can exchange hello packets, updates, queries, replies, and acknowledgements like the other ones. A two-way druther, these are when the two non-DR or BDR router have a neighbor relationship with another non-DR or BDR router, they can exchange only hello packets. Because again, the goal here is to have the DR other exchange hello packets, updates, queries, replies, and acknowledgements only with the DR and BDR. So if it's seeing its neighbor as a DR other, it can only send a hello packet, nothing else. The normal state for an OSPF router is usually full. If a router is stuck in another state, it could indicate that there's a problem forming the adjacencies, and only exception to this is a two-way state, which is normal in a multi-access broadcast network. So again, if we have multiple routes, it's going to be either a full or a two-way druther. Verifying the adjacencies, if you do a show IP OSPF neighbor, you can actually see the state, what they are. Again, full druther versus full DR. We need to understand the different states and a two-way. Again, if we have multiple routers in a string, the designated router is the only one, and the backup designated router, those are the only two that should be getting multiple packet types. Everything else should only be getting hello packets. So now let's understand the election process. So the DR and BDR election is based on the following criteria. First, the router in the network will elect the router with the highest interface priority as the DR. The second highest priority will become the backup designated router. So you can manually configure a priority between 0 and 255. If the interface priority is set to zero, the interface cannot be elected as a DR or BDR. The default priority of a multi-axis broadcast interface is one. If the interface priorities are equal, then the router will use the highest router ID. So router ID is actually not the first option in our election process. We can set priorities. If we do not set priorities, it will use the default priority of one, and then it will use the router ID. The election process will take place when the first router with the OSPF enabled interface comes online. It will start pairing with its neighbors, creating adjacencies, and trying to elect which one will become the designated router. What's really funny is I used to cover this way more in depth. Basically, when two SPF routers come online, they elect themselves as DR. As they start exchanging information, whoever has the higher router ID becomes the DR, and then the other one will actually unelect themselves and then elect the highest router ID as the DR. But as we add additional routers, the new routers do not always initiate a new election process. So unless we're clearing our OSPF process, 
if we add in additional routers, the election process will not repeat itself. Again, the way this is set up, so is if the DR does fail, then there should be a backup DR that should then take its place. So after the DR is elected, it will remain the DR until the DR fails. The DR actually has a process restart or if the DR uh, interface is shut down, that will actually then prompt the BDR to automatically promote itself to a DR. Again, however, after the BDR is promoted to a DR, a new BDR will be elected, and then the druthers with the highest priority of the ID will be elected that new BDR. So if the DR, the original DR that failed, does come back online, it does not take its DR status back unless a new election is then forced. So IP OSPF priority command, what we do is we issue the IP OSPF priority space value command again between 0 and 255. 0 cannot get a BR or a DR or a BDR state. So where do we issue this? We issue this underneath a interface and then we can clear the uh, OSPF process to initiate an election. And that is it for this module. If you got any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.